<laughs> this is the way to go. You will be able to do more with them than just hand them over and hope they do the magic themselves. Uh, eating and sensory differences. People who get missed as we come to topics like this. And it will be showers coming in. <laughs> we are looking at simple sensory strategies to support with behaviour without knowledge. Um, you could have really expensive things and they could be completely useless. And this would be a beautiful way of not only giving those particles gradually settle or, you know, whichever um, group they've decided is most profitable. <laughs> Compared to just the little advert in the catalogue, the capacity to express your emotional landscape when you don't have words to articulate it. This is a cushion and that's just going to press down. They'd be much more accessible. <laughs> I don't think my teeth will stand up to it, but of the drowning man who grabs his rescuers so firmly, so desperately that they pull them underwater, that's that's what the biter is. Classic response when you tell somebody that you're autistic is for them to say, oh, oh you don't look autistic. <laughs> and I feel like I should say, you should see inside my brain. Pickled onion crisps led me to actual pickled onions, which led me to onions. They were the, <laughs> the gateway, the slippery slope to a more normal sort of eating or a healthier, more balanced diet. And then we want to begin a journey toward being able to eat a richer landscape. How much power can be in simple sensory resources if they're used with a little bit of knowledge and know-how.